Atlantis. Was it just Plato's allegory for hubris, the arrogance of transgressing against the gods? Or was it a real place? Did Atlantis really sink into the Atlantic Ocean? Or were they actually Mayans? Or Martians? Stick around and you might just find out the answers to these questions on this episode of Unsolved Mysteries Solved! Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm Cassandra Cherry, and I have with us our primary host, Chad Kimmons. That's Dr. Dr. Chad Kimmons. Mm -hmm. He has a PhD. Yes, and uh, it is in solving unsolved mysteries. So, Mm -hmm. my parents are. Well, my dad's dead, but my mom was very disappointed in my life choices, so... <laughs> oh, no! You have to have, like, some sort of, t- like, terribly tragic backstory to, to sort of back that up. She just doesn't like what I do. Yeah, like, here's... When I go home to talk, to visit, it's like, so you still uh, pretending that you have a PhD in Solving Unsolved Mysteries? And I'm like, it's a real PhD, Mom! Stop invalidating what I do for a living! And she's like, okay, and rolls her eyes. And she's like, we'll talk about this again next time, I guess. I've got 25K in, like, unpaid student loans. Leave me alone. And then, like, as I'm leaving, she'll slip me, like, $200 and be like, since I know you can't pay the bills doing what you do, here's some money. No, that's not true. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, fair, fair, fair. (laughs) Anyway. Anyway, so what do you know about Atlantis? Uh, Actually... Probably not as much as you, since you did the research on it. I know. But I do, I do remember doing a report on it when I was, like, like, when I was younger, I wanted to be an Atlanteanologist. That's pretty cool. And then I realized that it's a very niche profession and doesn't pay, really. (laughs) (laughs) Because, like, the whole idea of being an Atlanteanologist is trying to find Atlantis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I can see how that's going to be very narrow. Right. And usually yeah. you don't get paid unless you get results. So True. <laughs> but you know what? Think I think we might just find it today. All right. But you do know, as an Atlanteanologist, where the origins of the theory of Atlantis are. Yeah, it was um, Homer. No, it was Plato. <laughs> I thought it was Homer. Nope. Well, like... I know Homer wrote about it, too. <laughs> So... Yep, yep. Everyone and their dog wrote about Atlantis, to be fair. But, uh, no. The origin of the story of Atlantis is actually in a story told by the Greek philosopher Plato. Which, you know, that's actually probably his wrestling name more than anything, because it means broad. It's like if you had a professor named, like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and everyone just called him The Rock. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I've always been amused by that, so that's, like, my aside (laughs) here. (laughs) It means broad? Yeah, it means broad, like broad back. Oh. So basically he was passing on this tale as it was quote-unquote towed to him by a guy named Critias. And Critias was like, this has been told to me by this guy, who was told by this guy, who was told by this guy, and this happened like 9,000 years before I was born, but... Okay, so already, this shit is super sus. I mean, <laughs> the, we're... <laughs> Right out of the gate, we're in territory of, yeah, I heard it from a friend of a friend of a friend whose cousin's third uncle's dog once witnessed somebody actually witnessing this 9,000 years ago. Mm Mm-hmm. And Plato just, what, just goes, oh, that seems legit. (laughs) Maybe, maybe. But to be fair, that's how oral histories are passed down in a lot of civilizations, and it does fair. lead yeah. to certain truths. It's just couched in a whole lot of, like, metaphor, allegory, all that good stuff. Okay. But yeah, so the, the way the story goes, as he tells it, is that Atlantis was a very powerful naval nation. Uh, that lay outside the Pillars of Heracles. Now, the Pillars of Heracles, is that like a, um, is that a metaphor? No, it is a physical, geographical place. Okay. And it could be one of two places. So, one of those two places that most people know as the Pillars of Heracles is the Strait of Gibraltar, which is the opening between North Africa and uh, Spain, where the Mediterranean meets the Atlantic Ocean. Right. And the other one is uh, somewhere between a couple of Greek islands. 
And so there's some debate in the Atlantean community about which one of those Plato meant. Okay. Because a lot of them are like, well, if he meant, well, the Pillars of Heracles over by Greece, then it could be this place. Or if he meant the ones out uh, leading to the Atlantic Ocean, then it could be a continent out there. I'm just, I'm imagining that this is like the back then version of modern day people who can't tell the difference between the real Eiffel Tower and the Eiffel Tower in Vegas. Yeah, pretty much. Or like (laughs) Paris, France and Paris, Texas, or, you know. Yeah, or Rome, Texas and Rome, Italy. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically these people are the the, uh, ancient versions of stupid Americans who believe that only America exists. So, the way Plato described it, Atlantis was the ideal republic. It was a proto-utopia. Atlantis was the basis of the idea of what a utopia would be. Right. And it was it was uh, basically patronized by Poseidon. And, like, in Greece, all of the cities have their own patron god. Right. And I, I remember that from the report that I did back yeah. in high school or whatever. So Yeah. And Athens' patron god is Athena. And in the past, Poseidon and Athena competed for who was going to control Athens. And that led directly to the invention of olives and horses. The Athenians liked olives better, and so Athena got to rule Athens. Which kind of pissed Poseidon off, which might lead into part of the story. It led to the invention of olives and horses? Yes, I forget what Athena made olives out of, but uh, Poseidon created horses out of uh, sea foam. In Greek mythology, okay. Yep. I was like, wait a minute, that's not how evolution <laughs> works. <laughs> that's not how evolution works at all. <laughs> it's like that Geico commercial, that's not how any of this works. <laughs> <laughs> so, Athena and Poseidon, they got they got some issues between each other, some uh, bad blood that thing Mm -hmm. and uh atlantis was as the ideal state very highly advanced it had greater like technology greater weaponry just greater organization greater numbers and it started a takeover of the local area and it was just by the skin of their teeth that the athenians were able to like work up an alliance and as that alliance was falling apart, drive the Atlanteans back. And essentially, as the Atlanteans were driven back, they suffered consequences for their hubris in deciding to take over other people's lands and territory, specifically going into the other gods' areas, and okay. for their corruption and everything. Was this brought about by, like, Zeus, or...? I don't think Plato says. I think Poseidon may have done it himself, given the earthquakes and the tsunamis, because uh, that's definitely Poseidon's territory. Hold up. But, yeah. So, this motherfucker goes, hey... Uh, we're gonna have a contest with Athena, so I want you to go try to take this place over, because I want Athens. And then when they fail, he's like, guys, you shouldn't have been doing that shit. Or, like, how dare you fail. Oh, okay. Something like that. But yeah, also, that, that there was a lot of corruption going on in the higher ranks. Okay. Like, they got a they got a Donald Trump in there, and everything went to hell in the handbasket. Okay. I was just imagining, like, hey, go do this thing. How dare you do this thing that I just told you to do? (laughs) (laughs) The gods are like that, though. Let's be real. The Greek gods are like that, though. (laughs) Realized he was losing and he was like, oh, man, Zeus is going to be mad. I got to save face. How dare you? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Direct text. But afterward, there occurred violent earthquakes and floods. And in a single day and night of misfortune, all your warlike men in a body sank into the earth and the island of Atlantis in like manner disappeared in the depths of the sea. For which reason the sea in those parts is impassable and impenetrable, because there is a shoal of mud in the way, and this was caused by the subsidence of the island. You know what? So said Plato. Yeah. I think I remember that. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so it probably was like the people of Atlantis were getting uppity or something. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I seem to remember in the report that I did that Poseidon sank the island because they had 
disobeyed him or something. Yeah, they they were getting too big for their britches, and they were right. like, "We can conquer Athens without you." Athens. And then <laughs> Athens. <laughs> we can conquer Athens without you. Well, I didn't <laughs> ask you to conquer that city, so that's strike number one. <laughs> yeah. Second, uh, what is Athens? I'm really confused. <laughs> Are you guys tripping on shrooms or? I think it's like a subspecies of ants. Oh. Hallucinogenic ants. <laughs> oh, man. So he sank the, the island. Yeah. Essentially. Is... Essentially. Okay. And so that was Plato's version of events. Okay. And Aristotle, who was a student of Plato's, was like, yeah, this is obviously a fable. He made this shit up. He's trying to make a point about you don't go against the gods. This is what an ideal state is, and even an ideal state can fall if it goes into corruption and goes against the will of the gods. Right. And so that was the main line of thought for a long, long time. Then there was this guy named Krantor, who was a student of Xenocrates, who was a student of Plato. And he's like, no, he's right! Atlantis did exist, and I can prove it! And we've had Atlantean studies ever since. Okay. But uh, there have been a lot of theories about where exactly Atlantis is and what it was. Was it an island or was it a continent? It could have been as big as Libya or Asia or it could have been as big as Crete. Like all of Asia? The Greek interpretation of how big Asia was depends on who you talk to. They did not know how big Asia was. I was gonna say, man, that's there's no way that shit's hiding between Africa and Spain or whatever. Yeah. If it's as big as Asia. So, uh, we have a lot of options. Do you want me to go to the Pillars of Her Heracles in Greece or the Pillars of Heracles out into the Atlantic Ocean first? I want you to do whatever you want to do. Okay, cool. Let's start with Greece. You know what? I'm not a misogynist. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm a, I'm a feminist. I'm all yeah. for it's, it's your, your life, your body, your choice. You go where you want. So going with the theory that what Plato meant were the hiller, pillars of Heracles over in Greece, mm -hmm. uh, there was there there still is there not there was but there still is a Greek island called Crete, right. and Crete used to be the seat of what was called the Minoan Empire. Right. And so the Minoan Empire was a sophisticated maritime society that rose to power around 2000 BC and dominated the entire Mediterranean. Uh, it was the first European civilization to have written language, running water, and paved roads. Okay. And so they were famous for their artisans, their engineers, for being advanced. Right. And so they started to decline in the late 15th century BC, and then devastation hit. There was a volcano that erupted on the nearby island of Thera, and it was one of the biggest eruptions in human history with the strength of 40 atomic bombs. Do you, can you put it in terms of Pompeo? Or do you have a comparison? So Pompeii? Yeah, Pompeii, sorry. Pompeii is a, a f Beth Steele song. Pompeo, <laughs> Pompeo. <laughs> but um, I, I think it was like a, Pompeii was like a 10th of what the uh, Thera eruption was. I don't have like it in terms of atomic bombs, right. but. <laughs> Pompeii was like, Pfft, and Thera was like, Pfft, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, that works. <laughs> to give a little context, the nearby island of, uh, let's see, what was it called? Santorini. Part of the island got, like, blasted away into the ocean from how strong the uh, volcanic e eruption okay. was. Whereas Pompeii was sort of, like, destroyed but preserved in ash, all life on Santorini was just gone. They were never able to recover any bodies from that time period. Okay. But it was devastating. All the nearby islands, uh, their trade cities, everything got obliterated. And the island of Crete was 70 miles away, but they were rocked by devastating tsunamis well, yeah, and I'm... they were able to survive for another 50 years after that but the economy failed and then they were overtaken militarily and so that was the end of the empire okay. and so that happened 900 years before Plato's time 
And so a lot of people either argue, eh, when you translated that, you put on one too many zeros. Right. Or that these events were either really what Atlantis were, or that was what inspired Plato to make up the story about Atlantis. Okay, that's plausible. Yeah. And in 1973, geologist Dorothy V. Taliano mm-hmm. confirmed through surveys uh, and reconstruction that the topography of Akrotiri which was a town on Santorini, matched Plato's description of an Atlantean city, particularly that it had canals and a ring of, like a ring of three canals and like three walls that surrounded the main center of the city and that it had land bridges going outwards from that. Sort yeah. of like a pinwheel. Yeah, I remember that too. So that's one theory. Okay. That's plausible. I'm holding out for uh, Mars Attacks uh, or whatever it is. That, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get I there. I, that's, that's the only reason I agreed to do this episode. Is I'm super excited to hear this theory. <laughs> cool. I'm so glad you're excited to hear that theory because like, I, I was reviewing that story and I was just like, oh man, holy shit, this is wilder than I remembered it being. Right. <laughs> so another theory about where Atlantis was, what Atlantis was, was that it was a continent or other some such landmass that existed in the Atlantic Ocean outside of the, the Pillars of Heracles, outside the Strait of Gibraltar. Okay. And although having a continent all its own right there and that could have sunk into the ocean was disproved by the discovery of tectonic plates mm-hmm. and all that, uh, another theory was that the Americas were Atlantis. When what? the New World was discovered, a lot of people looked at that and were like, hey, there really is a continent out that way. Hey, we found Atlantis. What the? Yeah. Cousin f- Betty White Crocker bullshit. I'm so. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh people genuinely thought that Atlantis was the New World. And, like, okay. specifically. People got to the uh, Aztec area and like they got to see like the ruins of the Mayan civilization and like what the Aztecs currently were. And you know, you know conquistadors, you know European Mm -hmm. explorers. They're like, wow, you people are not European and you are brown skinned and you have those features. Clearly this civilization was made by someone who was much superior to you and white. So that's where you people comes from. <laughs> white, yeah. white man sees somebody who's not white and, hey, you people. They're just like, what do you mean, you people? You people who live here. That's what I meant. I didn't, wasn't being racist. No, we're, we're, we're not racist at all, you guys. So that that's what they thought. They thought that the... Atlantean civilization existed in the Americas, specifically that it was the Mayans who were the Atlanteans. Mm -hmm. And this gave rise to a subset of uh, New Age beliefs called Mayanism. Okay. And so Ignatius Donnelly specifically was inspired by the Mayanism beliefs and wrote Atlantis, the antediluvian world in 1882, Mm -hmm. claiming that All known ancient civilizations were descended from Atlantis due to the Atlantean diaspora. I remember hearing that. When Atlantis was destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. He believed that Atlantis was the original Garden of Eden and that it was destroyed by Noah's flood. Which we talked about both of those actually in the the first episode that you were on about the Garden of Eden. Callbacks. I don't remember seeing anything about this guy specifically when I was doing my research on that. But I do remember Mm -hmm. mentioning that people thought that Atlantis was the Garden of Eden. And remember something about the Mormons and... (laughs) The Mormons didn't believe in the flood. They believed that the flood happened as... Or that up until, what was it, like 9,000 years ago? I can't remember exactly Uh what it was. Oh, the up until like 9,000 years ago, the something didn't... I can't remember what it was. It was a... They didn't believe in the flood. Was that what it was? I remember that they didn't believe in the flood. Whatever it was, it was real f***ing dumb. (laughs) Uh, not to like bash on somebody's beliefs but like when your beliefs are in direct contradiction to like hard science that's real dumb 
<laughs> bless your heart, guys. I love you so much, but bless your heart. Like, I'm not going to call anybody who practiced Christianity or something dumb because you can't prove that God does or doesn't exist. So it's not mm-hmm. technically a direct contradiction with science, but... True. Anyway. We'll get back to God later. F- Mormons. <laughs> uh, so, like, taking off of that, mm-hmm. there was this Russian mystic, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. Uh, That's a name. And her, yeah, and her <laughs> partney, partner, uh, and her partner, Henry Steele Olcott, founded the Theosophical Society in the 1870s. And so that became that. Okay, yeah. They founded the Theosophical Society in 1870s, and that was one of the things that created the New Age movement, combining Western Romanticism and Eastern religious concepts. And she took Ignatius Donnelly's book. That's the guy that believed the the Great Flood washed it away, right? Yeah. Okay. That Atlantis was the Garden of Eden, 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 Garden of Eden, all of that. So she took his book, ran with it, and wrote The Secret Doctrine in 1888, which she claimed was verbally dictated in Atlantis. And she claimed that, unlike the military threat that Plato described, the Atlanteans were cultural heroes. And, uh... So, hold up. She's... She wrote this book, correct? Yeah, The Secret Doctrine. And she's claiming that it was dictated in Atlantis. Yes. So, is she claiming that this is something she found and then later people were like, oh, you're lying, and she got found out? Or is she claiming that she went to Atlantis and verbally dictated this book. I think what her deal is, is that she channeled the spirit of someone who lived in Atlantis and they dictated it for her. That's f- stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what these people believe. And that leads further into uh, what we're going to get to later. But, uh, that's like, the literally... dumbest a l- shit. <laughs> This is, like, when I'm on the other side, literally, this is, like, 90% of, <laughs> of my participation is me just going, that's so f- dumb. <laughs> you dumb mother. <laughs> How dare you? Why would you even? <laughs> like, so, what a lot of the people who subscribe to the Mayan theory of Atlantis or the uh, theories that branched off of that, uh-huh. a lot of them believe in the ability to channel spirits from higher dimensions and the ability of people to remember memories from their past lives. And so they use that as further evidence for their theories and as a basis for figuring out more stuff about the past. So Blavatsky, she wrote The Secret Doctrine and that she described something called racial evolution rather than primate evolution. And that the Atlanteans were the fourth quote unquote root race that were succeeded by the Aryan race, a.k.a. the modern human race, you can see where this is going. Right. But in her theory, there were... So that book that she wrote became one of the pretexts for the Aryans to claim that they were the supreme race in Germany. And you know how that all went down. No, I'm Uh, not familiar. (laughs) No, we don't need to go into World War II. No one knows what that is. It's fine. But it is to be noted, however that uh, Blavatsky described the Atlanteans as being olive-skinned with mongoloid traits, and they were actually the ancestors of the modern Native Americans, the Mongols, and the Malayans. So, okay. uh, the idea that the Atlanteans were Hyperborean Nordic supermen was uh, popularized in the 1900s by Guido von Liszt et al., directly pre- preceding Nazism. And so, that okay. was a different branch. <laughs> Okay. So I'm just just soaking this all in. Yeah. Formu- so, formulating a theory. Okay. So take that, put it in a box, put it on a shelf. We'll get back to it. <laughs> take that, put it in a box, take it out to the dumpster, set the dumpster on fire, because <laughs> all of that is absolute garbage. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. So there's. I don't want to come back to this. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's a building block, okay? It's a building block. <laughs> anyway, there's another theory. So, there's another theory that was developed by one Charles Hopkins. 
And he believed that Atlantis was actually Antarctica. I recognize the name. Okay. So, Charles Hopkins believed that Antarctica was once much farther north, and thus capable of supporting a thriving human society. But that around 12,000 years ago, the shifting of the Earth's crust due to a polar shift of the Earth's magnetic field suddenly forced Antarctica to drift further and further south. Does this lead into the theory of the, like, Earth under the Earth? No. <laughs> okay, because... Sadly, no. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I, I know the hollow Earth theory. Yeah, hollow Earth. Because, like, the mm-hmm. Nazis legitimately believed in this shit, apparently, and, like, they went to... They did. They went to Antarctica to try and find it. And I mm-hmm. thought that's where you were going, but... Apparently. Nope. It's it's not the hollow earth theory. Okay. Because the hollow earth theory says, it, basically, that the north and south poles fold into the earth and that there is an interior to the earth that is just as easily livable as right. the outside of the earth. Right. But the polar shift theory is one that says the earth is the earth as we know it, mm-hmm. what it is. But there is quantifiably it is scientifically proven that due to the metal in the earth's core spinning as it does and as hot as it is it creates a magnetic field around the earth right and that's one of the things that things that along with the ozone layer protects us from things like solar radiation right and it has been documented in uh, the geological records that occasionally the pole will shift and it will move to some other part of the earth and that the earth in turn the crust has to move in order to like accommodate that i don't know if it's like supposed to get the north and south poles back up to being upright or not because the earth will always spin in the same direction it has always been spinning but the crust will shift to fit the poles or something. I don't know how exactly to explain it. But according to this okay. theory... Fair enough. Yeah. But according to this theory, the poles shifted enough, causing Antarctica to suddenly go where the South Pole is. It became the new South Pole. Okay. And everything froze over very quickly. And everyone on Antarctica perished, and there are now people and cities buried under miles and miles of ice. Okay. And so a lot of people are like, like, no, nah, that that's not true. That can't be true, blah, 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 for obvious reasons. But there's a lot of people who believe that there is a government conspiracy to hide this. And they cite uh, a 1513 uh, Piri Reese map that seems to depict Antarctica's coast centuries before it was actually discovered as evidence that it was once inhabited by people and that information got carried forward. They also Hold on. Did uh, did you say ghosts? No. Oh. (laughs) For some reason I was I I was kind of spacing out and like I was listening but only with like half an ear kind of thing. Oh that's fair. I'm droning. Well no it's not because of you it's because of like again I'm just so tired. And Mm. uh I thought you said something about ghosts, and I... Anyway, sorry. I mean, I was talking about ghosts of the future past earlier, and we'll come back to ghosts of the future past later. So you might have actually been in the future, coming back to your past consciousness to be like, wait, what? In the future past of the future, (laughs) to talk about the past in the future with the future past. (laughs) Exactly. I'm so confused. (laughs) It's okay, we'll get back to it. Continue. And also people see, like, NASA photographs of Antarctica, Google Earth images, and they see, oh, that looks like a city under the ice. And there was also a video from... Of, huh? Well, of course it f- does, because you're looking for I it. I know. Like, I know, exactly. That's yeah. so dumb. It's like seeing faces in uh, Mars yeah. and stuff like that. Like, even though we now know that it was just a trick of the shadows, there are still people who believe that there's a great stone face on Mars, and, like... Mm-hmm. They'll look at, like, high rendering or high res renderings of it and go, well, see, it's still clearly there. It's just been covered up over time. Burr, 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 burr. Why did I turn into Kermit the Frog? <laughs> and uh, it's like, no, you're f***ing looking for it. So you're seeing what you want to see. Mm-hmm. You dumb mother f- God damn it. Yeah. Like I said, 90% of my participation is just calling people stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Anyway. So that's Antarctica. Right. And there's one last thing before we get into the meat of what you really want to hear about. Okay. So there is a theory that 
Atlantis was actually in the Bermuda Triangle. In the late 1960s, a professional diver named Ray Brown was treasure hunting in the Bermuda Triangle over near Miami, and he claimed that he found an underwater city. He said that he found buildings that looked very advanced compared to normal ruins, and that there was a giant pyramid with two metal hands holding a crystal ball, which he kept for himself. And so... Has anybody seen this, what he's saying it was there? Well, a team of French divers went and they confirmed that there was an enormous crystal pyramid in the seabed, and they claimed that their sonar reading said it was larger than the Pyramid of Giza, and that the top of the pyramid had the ability to open and suck in water occasionally, creating a vortex, and that this pyramid was the cause of all the weird shit that happened in the Bermuda Triangle. No other team of scientists has confirmed this. So we're potentially looking at a situation like with, um, what was his name? Joseph Martin or whatever. The, mm -hmm. um, from the Mormons, where he's, he's like, oh, I've got these tablets, but only I can see them. Only I can read them. Uh -huh. And they were destroyed. Okay, well, I'll have God send me other ones, but y you can see these but I've got this special keystone thing that I have to look through. It's, it's attuned to my energy only, so only I can read it. I'll have to tell you what it says. Oh, look at that. It says I get to have 17 wives. That's weird. Like, <laughs> that's the kind of vibe I'm getting from this. Like, yeah, I found a crystal ball, but no, you can't see it. No. He claim The guy who took the crystal ball claims that this was clearly the work of aliens preparing us to be part of an advanced galactic community and that you could only communicate with them if you had the right crystals, like the crystal ball he took. That no one else has ever seen. So it's exactly like that. Okay. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Christ. So. You know, if you're gonna... Never mind. No, no, no. Go Continue. Uh, it's... I'm, f I don't like people. <laughs> 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 I'm... Just... I hate people. <laughs> why do people exist? <laughs> why? Why do people? Why do people even? Why? Why? Why, why do people? Why are why people? people? <laughs> why? Why people? Why people? <laughs> we could be here all day talking about me hating people, so <laughs> that's we should fine. probably move on. Okay, so just put that in a box. Put it on the shelf with uh, the... Uh... Right, throw it in the dumpster that's already on fire. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, though. Like, yeah? <laughs> sorry. this is, It's going to bother me if I don't say this. Uh, if you're going to come up with a stupid theory like this, like it's, that's obviously fake, like maybe he thinks it's real, at least come up with something original. Like this one's been done to death. The whole... Oh, well, only I can communicate with these people or this thing or this deity because I have this special thing. But no, you can't see it because, you know, then it's not as special. I don't know. Like with the Ark of the Covenant, there is a church in Ethiopia where they claim that they have the Ark of the Covenant. And the person who runs the church, deacon or whatever, was going to reveal it. But then Whoa. the day that he was going to reveal it, he came out and he was like, well, we decided not to reveal it to anybody because we don't want anybody to die. Like anybody who looks on this, like I can look at it because God has blessed me. But if y'all look at it, I don't want you to die. So you know, just trust me. It's it's in here. We have it. It's safe and sound. Only I can look at it. But it's it's there. And it's like, this has been done to death. Like this was uh, this was 2009 that that happened. Oh, man. And, like, people still flock to this church in Ethiopia thinking that this motherfucker has the f***ing Ark of the Covenant. Bless their hearts, honestly. And I just, I, I hate people. I <laughs> That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. So, you might hate people more after this, but are you ready to see where the Martians come in? I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay. So. You never know. I might like this theory. You might. You might. Because this is, this is the culmination theory of everything that the uh, New Agers or the Mayanists or whatever mm -hmm. were talking about. So, as the theory goes, there was once a time long ago where humans existed at a high level of consciousness. We were psychic and interdimensional, and we communicated through thoughts and emotions like animals do, and things like speaking and writing seemed like primitive ways of communicating. Okay. So, we lived on a large 
archipelago called Lemuria that ran from Hawaii all the way through to the Easter Islands. According to this theory, humans used to live on Lemuria, and there was a polar shift in the magnetic poles, right. along with a consciousness shift, and we moved further up in consciousness, but because of the polar shift, we lost the Lemurian Islands and everyone had to scatter to other continents. And during this period of tumultuous upheaval... So this wasn't like, sorry, I, this wasn't like it just sank into the sea. This was like a boat that's slowly taking on water and they had enough time to get out kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that kind of thing. Okay, gotcha. So the Lemurian Islands sank into the sea and the continent of Atlantis rose from it and humanity scattered. At around this time, there were about a thousand humans of a very high consciousness greater than all the other humans who were called the Nikals. They were priests. And they prepared hu Atlantis to be humanity's home by projecting their energies across it in the shape of the Tree of Life. With two, and it had like eight energetic points okay. with like two extras on the top and bottom for different islands at the top and bottom of Atlantis. And so that caused the Earth's Kundalini to center on Atlantis, and it called all of humanity to come back from their exile and resettle on Atlantis. What is Kundalini? The Kundalini is a concept in uh, Asian Indian spiritualism, in Hinduism. Okay. It's basically your spine, and it is also the center of your spiritual energies. It's where your chakra lines up, and you can do meditations to activate your kundalini and sort of balance your uh, spiritual energies. Okay. And according to this theory, every living thing has a kundalini, and the earth itself has a kundalini that moves every once in a while. And wherever it hits the surface is going to be the spiritual center of the earth. And... For the last 13,000 years, it was in uh, Nepal. And that's why Buddhism was so spiritual. Okay. <laughs> no, that's just, that, I mean, that's that makes sense but through yeah, this theory. Yeah. I was waiting for something for me to just f latch onto, but like, <laughs> when you said Nepal, I was like, why Nepal? And then you explained it. So, it, yeah, like, I'm not sure if I believe it, but so far it makes sense in the theory. I, uh, they have an internal logic to the theory that sort of holds it together. Right. And I tend to get, I tend to get the most angry when their internal logic makes no f sense and has a bunch of f holes in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that's where you're like, well, now the theory is just you saying shit. That now you're just saying words and in no particular order, and I'm not sure <laughs> I like this. I don't know if I like where this is going. Yeah, but so far they've got an internal logic built up. Okay. So, according to this theory, we're going to call, hu like, hu Earth humanity the Lemurians, because that's where they used to live. Okay. And at this point in time, we're a very immature species, and we had only mastered eight of the ten energies represented by the Tree of Life that they had powered the Atlantis with. Okay. And so, people only moved to build cities in the areas that most matched the energy that they had identified with and mastered. But this left two of the energy areas completely uninhabited, and they were still calling for people to come and settle down there. This, I gotta tell you, this starting to sound more and more like a fantastic high fantasy epic series. I know, right? <laughs> like It really does. <laughs> or like the backstory, like maybe the, uh, the backstory for a setting for a high fantasy series. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but just keep it in mind. Okay. So, these vortexes of energy were still pulling life to them, and so two extraterrestrial races came to fill the void. The first of them were the Hebrews. Okay. So, according to this theory, the Hebrews were an extraterrestrial species that, or not really a species, because they're still people, like human people, but they're sort of from our future past if that makes sense. But essentially, they were in a different dimension, and they learned a lot of lessons, they did a lot of things, but in order to move to the higher realms of consciousness, 
they had to pass a certain threshold of understanding of the universe. The Hebrews were in a different dimension? Yeah. Okay. When you build up the internal logic of this theory, humans are a multi-dimensional species. And when you have access to the higher realms of consciousness, you can access more and more of the different dimensions. Okay, yeah. I'm just... <laughs> so. <laughs> the, Jew the Jewish people were planeswalkers. <laughs> Essentially. But before they could graduate to a higher realm of consciousness, they failed the grade and had to take it over. And so, in order to retake the grade that was this stage of life, they went and they got sent to live with the Lemurian humans. And so they moved into one of the energetic spots on Atlantis, and they were like, oh hey, we know all this stuff you guys don't know. You know some stuff we don't know? We'll share knowledge, and we'll be good. Right. And so they got to integrate, and everything was good. Okay. But that still left one energetic spot not filled in and so then we move to mars like we we as a people move to mars or you're moving the narrative to mars i'm moving the narrative okay to mars. i was like wow that took a f leap <laughs> i know right <laughs> so they're trying to get people to move into this one spot that's still empty and instead everybody moved to mars <laughs> <laughs> nope no we're moving the narrative to mars so a million years ago mars looked very much like earth today however they did something called the Lucifer Experiment and destroyed the planet's ability to maintain life. Okay. So, the Lucifer Experiment is... Okay, so internal logic to this theory. All life is part of the same consciousness or the same universal spirit. Mm -hmm. But spirit just divided itself so that it could experience itself and that we're all part of the same entity. We're just in different bodies experiencing what we created. Right. We made a reality. And the Lucifer experiment is a part of spirit cutting itself off from the rest of the universal consciousness and creating a reality of its own. Instead of experiencing unity, it experiences duality. And so the Martians decided to do that. As a result, they became cut off from emotions like love and compassion. And they resulted in getting a lot of greed, corruption, uh, they fought wars against each other, mm -hmm. and their technology was so great and powerful that they actually blew away their atmosphere and destroyed their planet. Like, atomic mutual destruction. Okay. And so, they had some refugees. What would probably yeah? happen if we were to ever have a nuclear war on Earth. Yeah, exactly what would happen to us if we ever had a nuclear war. They did that to themselves. Okay. And so there were some refugees, and they decided that they would create this thing called a Merkaba and use it to teleport through time and space and find a new place to live that wasn't totally ruined. And they found that energetic spot in Atlantis and decided, okay, we're gonna move there. And the moment they arrived, they're like, all right, everybody, we're taking over. And they waged war against the Atlanteans. But considering that they were only a few thousand versus a few million, they got sub subdued pretty quickly. And they were basically sort of like sat down. Where the hell are you from? You're from Mars? Oh, that is dead. You can't go back. We can't get rid of you. I guess you're living here now. So they took over the last spot? Yeah, they took the last spot on Atlantis and they made a city there. Okay. Things were okay for a while. The Lemurians and the Martians tried to learn from each other the way that the Lemurians and the Hebrews did. And they, they did... The Lemurians learned a lot but it also was sort of changing their perspective, sort of getting it more in line with what the Martians were had their philosophy being. And the Martians, meanwhile, weren't moved by the Lemurians at all. They were from a much more advanced civilization than the Lemurians had. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't take over forcefully, because they were much smaller in number. So they started taking over politically, and they sort of spread their influence and took kill hold of the reins of power. I was just imagining you were going to be like, they started taking over by breeding them out. They instituted Prima Nocta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every time you marry, I must lay with your wife so that there's a chance your firstborn son is actually mine. Right. <sighs> that's what That's what nobles did. Yeah. <laughs> it was such a f barbaric practice. Jeez, yeah. But no, they didn't do that, thankfully. But so... So they started taking over politically. Yeah, and that's a process that went on over the course of a few thousand years. Okay. And so, about 26,000 years ago, 
moving forward in the story. Right. A comet was heading towards the Earth, and the Martians and the Lemurians were arguing about what to do with it. <laughs> the Martians wanted to blast it out of the sky with their lasers, and basically be like, nah, f*** you, bitch. Uh, Hold up, they had lasers? Like, I, I, I understand it's yeah. thousand or whatever versus millions, but like, they had lasers and they couldn't f- take over? It was a matter of numbers. I don't know, that just seems like... Uh, Can you imagine, like, 2,000 people versus 2 million people? Even if you had lasers. If they had, they had atomic weapons. I don't think they actually took the atomic weapons with them, but they still had the knowledge. Okay, well, they will. Like, I think possibly in the internal, like, narrative of this story, Mm -hmm. they had some weapons, but not all of them, but they still remembered how to make them, if that makes sense. Well, I'm just going to chalk this up to a loophole. Or a, yeah, uh, a we'll plot, the plot right there. Boop. And uh, yeah. we'll move on. Yeah, we can nag at it later. <laughs> we'll see We'll see how many more plot holes we can find in this theory and whether we can, like, crochet something with it. Like, honestly, so far, it's completely out there and I think it's really dumb. But, <laughs> like, the internal logic holds up until you get to, yeah, they had all this advanced weaponry and couldn't f- take over people with bows and arrows mm-hmm. i don't know no no it's a it's a legitimate critique but yeah like i've i've played sid meyer's civilization if i've got a f- cannon and the other guy has a, a, <laughs> just a normal warrior i'm gonna win even if he's got like four or five warriors mm-hmm. anyway you got a few turns to blast him away okay so so comet was heading for earth right. martians wanted to blow it out of the sky with lasers the uh, Lemurians, guided by the Nikal, their priests, said, This is natural. This is divinely ordained. We have to let it hit the earth. We're going to be fine. Okay. <laughs> and so the Martians were like, fine, whatever. We'll see what happens. And the comet landed in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Or specifically, they say it landed where South Carolina is today, but it was the ocean back then. And so... So it was um, where... You said South Carolina? Yeah. Apparently they found fragments of it across a couple of uh, states around that coastline. Okay. But pieces of the comet broke off as it was falling through the atmosphere. And one of those fragments hit the Martian city, killing a whole bunch of people and pissing off the Martians. And so they said, F you guys. We did what you wanted and we suffered for it. So you you know what? Now you're going to suffer and we're actually going to take over. And so they started trying to make another Merkaba, that thing that allowed them to travel through space and time. Right. And so it's this really big sort of spirit machine that can do a lot of shit. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's it's like the ultimate MacGuffin. They built it, except they did it wrong, and it caused rips to tear open to the lower dimensions. Oh my god. And it almost destroyed the Earth. A whole lot of, like, lower-level spirits started pouring into the upper dimension and possessing people, and even when they... There were kaiju coming out of the Pacific Rim. <laughs> Yeah, everyone was getting, like, weird diseases and all this nasty stuff was happening. At one point, Satan himself showed up. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. It was, like, that bad. Their past selves met with their future selves, and then, (laughs) like, it was like that meme of Spider-Man, the two Mm Spider-Mans pointing at each other. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, hey, you, it's me. Hey, me, it's you. I'm you from the future. Well, I'm you from right now. What? Oh, I'm you from the past. Oh, man. So all of this was going on, and at the same time, there was a polar shift that happened, and it was it was just mass chaos. Right. And so humanity was on the brink of destruction. Skipping, skipping around a lot, basically, the priests talk to higher dimensional spirits, and they're like, okay, we have a plan for you to survive this, but it's going to have a lot of steps in it and we're gonna set you back to like square one you gotta start from the bottom and get back here okay in like in like 13,000 years so in preparation they set it up so that all of the worldwide spiritual monuments would be created in like the fourth or sixth dimension and fall into the third dimension and that would set up the Christ consciousness grid. There's a whole lot of other stuff that goes into this that doesn't really relate to this, but long story short, the priests made themselves a Merkaba of their own 
and they got in it and they found a place to be safe. And when the polar shift happened, the entire Earth fell into a void as it went down in dimensions. And that wiped everyone's, like, collective consciousness. It wiped everyone back down to zero. And so Atlantis was destroyed due to all of that. Continents shifted, people were scattered, and everyone lost all their memory of Atlantis and everything that happened before it. And, it was... and that is that theory of what happened to Atlantis. And who came up with this theory? It is a collection of a whole lot of different theories, but uh, there's actually a video that describes it all. I can send you the link right now. Well, I just need to know who, when I build a Merkaba, who I need to go punch <laughs> in the f- throat. Because I was with you until the end, like, till the comet and the f- rips in, f- in time or whatever. And, like, I'm Like, so- it started falling apart because I only got halfway through the video. And then I was, and then I stopped taking notes and I was like, okay, now we're moving away from what actually happened to Atlantis and we're getting into a whole lot of like tangentially related things that don't directly relate to Atlantis. So yeah, but yeah, if you want to, if you want to see the video that was describing this theory, Mm -hmm. it's on like the spirit science channel, the human history movie. And it's, it's basically a culmination of a whole lot of different strains of new age thought and theory but i saw that at one time when i was like 15 and i was like wow that's some deep shit right there <laughs> well i'm gonna put it in a box <laughs> we're gonna put that box on a shelf and we're, and gonna, we're gonna put that shelf in the dumpster we're gonna we'll take a walk out to the already on fire dumpster <laughs> and uh you know we'll just we'll see what happens uh uh-huh. perhaps it'll fall into dimensional space on the way there There's, who knows I might, on the way there i might trip and oh no the box fell in the dumpster fire um <laughs> so <laughs> usually did, was that the last theory that was the last theory okay so usually at this point i would have you go first but since you're hosting uh-huh i don't know man like the logical part of me says that the minoan thing was probably the right one yeah like that makes the most sense knowing the history knowing uh right. the evidence everything that's hard and factual but there's this childlike wonder part of me still that wants to believe that atlantis was a real place mm-hmm. and so i'm gonna take a little bit from this bonkers nuts theory <laughs> I think that maybe there was a rift in time and space. I don't... The Martian thing, that's neither here nor there. (laughs) I think what happened is these motherfuckers started dealing with occult shit that they didn't know how to control. Mm -hmm. And as a side effect of that, there was a rip in time and space and Atlantis fell into it. And now it's floating somewhere in a different dimension. Maybe a different universe. Um, Yeah. Poseidon, of course, was just super angry. You know what? (laughs) Poseidon was so angry, and he wanted to take his his uh, his rage out on something, so he took his rage out. Other than the uh, colonists, Roanoke. <laughs> he was angry that he like he was angry at them for like first off for turning away from him and turning to the occult, but mm-hmm. he didn't have anybody to punish. So instead, he just got angry and punished <laughs> the island of Crete, the Minoans. Yeah. He was like, you know what? This island seems like it needs to get... F- yeah, this island's similar enough. <laughs> These people seem like they need to get f- I mean, shit, they're over here f- Like, breeding men and bulls to create minotaurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where the story's from. <laughs> so, you know, he was like, even though you didn't deal with the occult, you're doing some shady shit over there, <laughs> Minoan people so Mm -hmm. you get to feel my wrath instead and that's that is that that's my story and i'm sticking to it until a different episode where this shit comes up again and i'll probably change what i said that's fair so uh there according to the the wild bonkers nuts theory the merkaba that the uh martians created is that giant crystal like a corner of it is that giant crystal pyramid that was found in the bermuda triangle and that that was where atlantis sunk oh well that changes everything oh yeah that changes everything so clearly it must be in the bermuda triangle that that ties the entire bonkers ass bullshit theory together (laughs) why didn't you tell me everything makes sense i feel like this was a gotcha moment (laughs) 
<laughs> like you leave it out just to see what I'll say. You're like, yeah, he's going to call bullshit. And then I'm going to hit him with a <laughs> right hook. One, two punch. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, um, no, that doesn't change anything because I don't even believe. No, it doesn't. Like, cause we know that the pyramid's down there, right? Maybe, maybe not. There was a scientific team that went and said it was, and there were a bunch of teams who went and said, wait, we didn't find anything. Okay. Well, if it can't be reproduced, then f*** it. That's not real. Those people are liars. Yeah. And the crystal ball thing, that dude can <laughs> eat a bag of dicks. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so what's what's yeah. your theory? My theory... Because we got to get yours perspective on it, too. Yeah, my perspective. I really like the bonkers theory just because, as you said, it makes for, like, a great backstory for a high fantasy. It was fine until we went to Mars. Like, before then, it was like, man, mm-hmm. this could be such a great high fantasy series. And then we went to Mars mm-hmm. and it all fell to shit. <laughs> yeah. In my, yeah. Well, in my uh, opinion. Well, I mean, the Martians got there probably the same way that the Hebrews got there, apparently. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't even get me started on the fact that the Hebrews are planeswalkers. <laughs> Like, I know, right? That's uh, so. You like that theory? I I like it, but I don't think it's true. Right? Like more more than anything, probably the fact that it was just Plato making some shit up to prove a point. That's probably the reality. Although, although apparently the stories of Atlantis, or at least of a lost continent, sort of line up with a different story about the. Kumari Kandam? Can- can- I don't know how to pronounce Indian words. Kumari Kandam. Uh, but- <laughs> Kumari Kandam. <laughs> but yeah, there- there's apparently a-, a mystical place like that off the coast of India, too. And so it's like, hmm. Okay. But yeah, not- probably it's just an allegory. And that Crete was likely the inspiration for it. Okay. 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 Somehow we didn't wind up with a theory as wild as uh, Atlantis being in Brendan Urie's pockets. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, he's already got Garden of Eden to look after. He, True. He, he's only... He may be the, the the guardian of the Gates of Eden, but he's still only a man. Well, he can only handle, handle so much. And Andy's got his yeah. career to worry about. Anyway, even though we didn't come to a 100% conclusive solution because you're mm-hmm. going with allegory i went with what did i say it was crete something about oh yeah you were saying that it fell into interdimensional space and is lost to the void of time yes and i stand by that even though i couldn't remember what i f- said um, <laughs> it's okay you just need some coffee but anyway so uh that's another mystery in the books seems like um mm-hmm. and we just want to mention again we appreciate all of our listeners but if you guys could go to itunes and rate and review and again anything less than five star rating and you're dead to me mm-hmm. even if you want to leave a bad review you better leave a five star rating or there's i'll be holding the podcast hostage that is <laughs> that is 100 percent not true but um yeah just put a put a gun to the podcast's head and be like where's my freaking rating <laughs> just me in my computer room pointing a gun at my computer <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll delete the file. Chad, that's not how you delete files. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chad, stop. But uh, we also, I also want to mention again that the um, Patreon, first patrons only content will be some outtakes or outtakes from uh, next week's episode, whatever that may be. That will be going mm-hmm. up with the episode next week or shortly after there, shortly thereafter. By the time you're listening to this, you may have noticed that we have put up a preview of outtakes for free so that people can see what they'll be getting if they uh, subscribe at the, the $10 tier. In the meantime, as usual, if you have a mystery that you want us to solve right here on the podcast or if you want to send us a death threat or get our personal information, try to get us to dox ourselves so you can stalk us, whatever you want to do, you can send that to mysteries solved podcast, all one word at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter at UMS underscore podcast, on Facebook at Unsolved Mysteries Solved, or on the Discord server or the Facebook page, group page. Um, plenty of ways to get in contact with, with us if you need to. And just remember, what is it we always, how do we always end the show? And that's a wrap. Mm-hmm. Nope. If you question <laughs> us, you will be put down. Mercilessly. Uh, well, I mean, 
mean, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. question us or you will be put down. And we will catch you right back here with a brand new mystery next week. And thanks for listening. We'll see you guys then. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Shut up, guys. This is why I don't do these things in person. Are you a geek? I'm Carl. And I'm Robin. And we like to geek out. Come hang with us at CNR Geek Out, where every week we discuss a new nerdy topic. We're hosted on Spotify. Find out more at our Facebook and Twitter. We are the geeks. <laughs>